everybody. Hello, 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 everybody out there in YouTube land. Barb here. It is Thursday, March 23rd. I'm kind of being a little vague because I'm a little concerned here. I had to get my eye dilated and I look like a freak. <laughs> And I came home and I was talking to my son and he looked at my eye. He's like, oh, whoa. He's like, what the heck? He's like, I can't look at you. So um, my daughter said that perhaps if it's too much for you guys <laughs> to watch me with um, a dilated eye, because I'll give you a little close up here. That's what we're that's what we're working with here. Looking like a freak. I do have my sunglasses. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments if um if the dilated eye is too much for you, let me know and we can put the sunglasses on. <laughs> it is, I'm looking at myself and it's just like, whoa. So anyway, I had to get my eye dilated today. I kind of forgot that this was going to happen. I mean, I knew I had an appointment with the eye doctor because I I feel like I had another cataract, which I mean, I know I couldn't have another cataract. But sometimes the capsule that the lens goes into when they replace it. Uh, can turn cloudy over time. And it did in my other eye when I had my cataract surgery in 2021, I did have that happen where the capsule got a little cloudy and I went in, you know, they, they do a laser treatment on it. So I've been having difficulty seeing out of this eye. It's been blurry. And I thought, okay, I wonder if that same thing is happening. So I had an appointment today, totally forgot that they were going to dilate my eye. And then when she says, we're going to dilate your eye. And I was like, oh, great. I have to be live in like an hour because my appointment was at 3.30 and it's now five o'clock here. So, uh, yeah. So I do have to go back in two weeks and get the zap, 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 zap laser treatment done to get rid of the blurriness. And so I will have another freakishly weird looking eye um, in two weeks. So I... <laughs> I hope you guys aren't too freaked out by it. I mean, I'm assuming a lot of you have had this done before. So you're like, oh, it's just a dilated eye. It's no big deal. But my son was just like, mm -mm, nope, get away from me. I can't look at you, which is kind of funny because, I mean, he's a man and he hunts and he does all kinds of stuff like that. But he can't look at his mother with a weird, you know, with two different eyeballs, whatever. So anyways, I'm going to look at the comments now real quick and see if anyone is... <laughs> Tony says she's been there. It is horrible. Um, it seems like you guys don't seem to care that I have a freaked out eye. So I hope that um, other people that watch this later don't have an issue with it and aren't totally turned off by uh, me having a weird eye. Um, so, yeah, um, I had a fantastic week with my daughter. As you guys know, that's why I wasn't live last week because I was visiting her. So I actually was there for a full week and it was glorious. I didn't have to cook dinner once. <sighs> that in and of itself was worth it. Um, I did have to drive down there. It's about a four, it's about a four hour drive, but the roads were crappy um part of the way like from here to the next town is 30 miles and then from that to the next town is about an hour and a half well that long stretch of road between buffalo and casper wyoming there was like slush piles and i almost got into an accident uh i was driving along i was in the passing lane because it was more dry in that lane it was nicer and there was a truck like just a regular truck you know an extra cab pickup truck like a guy would use for work in the driving lane a couple car lengths in front of me we're just driving along all of a sudden my windshield is covered in slush i can't see anything so in a matter of seconds i'm freaking out lifting my foot off the gas gently pressing my brake because i know you don't slam on your brakes besides i couldn't see um i'm fumbling around to get the windshield wipers on the windshield wiper does its swoosh and i can see what do i see the front end of that guy's truck literally right in front of me for a split second until he goes off the road and rolls into the ditch. Oh my gosh, this all happened in just a few seconds and I'm like, bah! and of course the slush piles, because it was really windy, as soon as they appear, they're gone and the road is dry again for the most part. So I pull over, you know, I fumble around, get my stuff. I jump out and I go running back. So I'm like, oh my gosh, the guy just literally rolled his truck right in front of me. So I get to his truck. I'm the first person there, but what can I do? I can't even open up the door because it's like, you know, 
on its side. So I would have to open the door up and I wasn't strong enough to do that. So other people now are seeing what's going on and people are running across and some men are coming. And thank goodness, because men are stronger than women. And uh, these couple of guys were able to get the door open. And then me and another gal held it because the wind was blowing against it. The guy was in there. Um, he had a cut on his head. And the guys were asking him, are you OK? Do you think do you want us to get you out of there? And he's like, yeah, I think I'm okay. And yeah, I'd like you to help me get out. So they get him out. Um, he's a little, of course, disoriented as one would be when you roll your truck off the highway. Um, but he seemed fine. Um, so somebody was on the phone with 911, then some highway department workers that must have just been doing some road work showed up. And then as soon as everybody was there, everyone was gone. And I was like, do I need to stay here? I mean, there's no criminal activity going on. I mean, the guy just lost control of his vehicle, which could totally happen to anybody in a big slush pile. So I left. And then as I was driving away, I did see the highway patrol and an ambulance coming, you know, coming this direction. So um, if he would have been noticeably injured, like if he would have been like, I, you know, I, I had a broken leg or whatever, I, I would have stayed. But um, it was pretty obvious that he was, you know, okay for the most part. So I did go ahead and go. But oh my gosh, that freaked me out. And I still had to drive like three more hours. And a lot of it was in that crappy road. Ugh. I can still sort of see that flash in my mind of the windshield wiper flapping over. And there's the front of his pickup. So we're like front end to front end for that split second before he's off the road. Thankfully, I didn't hit him. I feel like if I wouldn't have put on my brakes, I probably would have hit him or he would have hit me, whatever. But, you know, I just from years and years of driving in crappy, snowy weather, I know that you don't slam on your brakes when something like that happens. You just gently press them to very slowly slow down or you'll lose it, you know. So ugh. anyway, that was my big excitement going down there. And then once I got there, it was just all fun and games. So we had a great time. We went down to Denver where she's going to be an intern for an accounting firm this summer. And we got to go into the office. It took us for a tour. So she's super excited to be doing that. And I'm very excited for her. She's going to stay with one of my cousins who lives literally like five minutes from this office that she's going to work in. Um, it's in a really nice part of town. So that made this mama's heart uh, feel better. There wasn't like, you know, noticeable scariness um in the area so i was very happy about that um so yeah so things are good and then i came home sort of uneventful on the way home i did go home a different way this way there was some more of that crappy wind and crappy snowy slippery roads but i was just going very slow i think i was going it was like a 75 mile an hour zone i was going like 40 because <laughs> i was still a little bit gun shy from what had happened to me a week ago or a week previously anyway that was my fun, you guys. And now my son's going on a trip to Alaska next week. Him and some buddies of his are going to visit another friend of theirs who lives in Alaska with her boyfriend. And so they're going to go up to Alaska and stay there for a week and have some fun. Okay, let me check these comments because I can't really see that well. I've got one eye that is blurry and one eye that's decent. So, uh, yes, thank you guys for your prayers and whatnot about me being okay. I tell you, that was literally scary that was scary um let's see if there's anything else that we need to discuss on here nope just that the dilated eye. <laughs> it looks so so crazy okay that is all <laughs> okay you guys so i do have some cute projects not exactly sure how well we're gonna do with stamping them now that i can't see that well but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, do it anyway. So I'm going to flip my camera and uh, then you won't have to look at my crazy eye anymore. And I'll put my glasses on so I can at least see out of one eye and then we'll, uh, we'll get to business here. So let's go ahead and flip this around, get you off of one stand, put you into another stand and then we'll tap the button twice why you have to tap it twice i still don't understand maybe it does that because it's like are you sure you want to flip the camera yes i am sure that i want to flip the camera thank you for asking okay glasses on and oh you guys can see my new little thing i do have a special going on between now and april 3rd 
um, I am offering a free grab bag of goodies with a minimum $75 order um, in my store at shoppingwithbarb.com. Here's my host code for the uh, rest of this period of time. And of course, the minimum order $75 for a free mystery grab bag. But of course, the more you order, the bigger your bag will be. So keep that in mind if you need any supplies. The retiring list will be coming out on the 29th. Uh, Stampin' Up's going to post that. Uh, discounts associated with that, I believe, are going to start April 4th. So we'll have some time to figure out what we want to order. Um, and with that, uh, we all know there's a color refresh coming. Uh, what colors are going? Your guess is as good as mine. I have my own opinions about a few colors that I would not be sorry if they left. So, um, yeah, as I'm sure we all do, we all have our favorites. And then we all have those colors that, you know, we just don't use that often. So we will uh, be looking at that. Uh, so we'll know what's coming and what's going um, on the 29th when the um, list is put out. So that'll be very exciting. Um, I did want to share something with you guys. While I was visiting my daughter, I found this pop socket at Target. I am excuse my language, I am a pop socket whore. I love pop sockets. I probably have 15 pop sockets and I could, I, I'll still buy more because I love them so much. But look at this. It's like liquid. So these little doohickeys, they float around in there. Is that not so fun? Seriously. There's like little alien heads. There's some mushrooms. There are some rainbows. There's some little smiley clouds and then glitter. And so this is my latest pop socket. Yeah, it was at Target. I had to buy it. Just had to buy it. Yeah. Pop sockets. That is so true, Barbara. Pop sockets and hoodies. Those are my two favorite things. In fact, I'm wearing a new hoodie. If you guys didn't notice, I have a new hoodie on that I got at a store called Air Apostle. It's kind of like, I think, a younger person store, like my daughter's age. But they had hoodies for $20. And I was like, I can't pass up a hoodie for 20 bucks. So it's kind of a navyish blue, different than my normal black. <laughs> I really like black hoodies, but I decided to step out of my comfort zone and go with this blue. It's got some purple accents. So I did go to Walmart and get myself a $3.88 purple t-shirt to go with it. So there you go. Okay. Sale going on. Order from me. I would love it. Okay. Um, I just released my Create Where You Are class to go called Around the Bend. Um, I think I have shared some cards with you guys. Where are they at? I'll show you. I'll show you what they look like. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. And this is one that I did for you guys a couple weeks ago um, on a live. This was also in the class. So there's four different cards. You make two each of each design. Um, and then there's a supply kit, pre-cut cardstock, everything. Um, for $48, I think I have five kits left. And I just read, I actually just, I've been talking about it for a while, but I actually made all the kits I need and I've got like five left. So there you go. All right. I also have another class this month, the Petal Park online class. This is what I do with Dina and Kelly. We just finalized all the cards. It's going to be ready next week. So yeah, it's fantastic. All right, here we go. Uh, my PDF library and class kit store has been live for about a month. It's been going great. Ooh, Pome Girl just asked if I got leggings. I did get a pair of leggings, you guys. I got them from Kohl's and I tried them on with my daughter. And then we actually got a shirt to go with them because I'm not, I feel like if I'm wearing leggings, I need to wear a long shirt. That's got to cover the booty because I don't, that's just not something I need to have everybody looking at. Um, if I was 20 years old, I would want people to look at my booty. I'm 56. I don't want anybody looking at it. So I did get a really cute plaid shirt to go over it. So I'm really excited. There you go. So yes, I did get some leggings. Eek! I know. Um, anyways, it's been it's been going really well. Uh, when you check out, you get your PDF right away. Um, so yeah, it's amazing. All right, I do have two kits that I have put on sale because I've got some excess of them. One of them is the Best Butterflies class. So it's normally $48. I did put it on sale for $33. So you can go to that uh, barbstamps.com slash shop if you're interested. And you can get uh, my Best Butterflies class for $33 or my Pretty Pop-Ups class for um 
$33, also normally $48, but I have a few extras and I just feel like um, I want to get rid of them. So I'm going to put them on sale and hopefully um, if you guys have these pop-up dies, they're really fun. If you don't, uh, you might want to get them quickly. They are on low inventory the last time I looked, so they are pretty fun. You can also add the dies to your class for $39.50, but I'll probably discount those too. So if you want the dies, let me know. And I am happy to give you a little bit of a discount on the dies as well as the class. Okay. My Irresistible, Hello Irresistible Stamp Camp, going great. We just posted the cutting guide a couple weeks ago, actually about a week and a half ago, into the Stamp Camp site. Um, any order of $30 or more in my online store. So if you order $75, you'll get the Stamp Camp for free plus the goodie bag through the end of the month here. So there you go. Stamp Happy Academy. Kelly did her live. I believe it was two days ago. It was amazing. She had some super cool stuff to share. And then Dina's live is going to be next week. So if you're a premium or live only member, you can check those out. I just uploaded, uploaded my Around the Bend class. So that's in there. Um, Kelly's doing uh, the music set and Dina's doing the sea turtles. So those will also be in Stamp Happy Academy very soon. So yay. Okay. And then as usual, I always have adhesive kits for sale. If you're into that, I have you covered. And just so you know, here are the two kits that I'm talking about. This one is the pretty pop-up. You can see all your cards stuck in there. Envelopes. Um, what is this called? Ribbon and gems. The Best Butterflies, this one happens to come with some designer series paper, a couple bags, some ribbon, and some gems. So those are on sale. And let's get to stamping, as they say in the wrestling world. I don't know if that's not what they say. Okay. I. Oh my gosh, you guys. This card that I designed, I was working on cards today. This card uses so many things. I really feel like I have to apologize because it's ridiculous the amount of products that I used on this card. But it's cute. And I'm sure you could substitute some things. So uh, first off, I'm using the stitched rectangle dies. I am using this die here. So I have my dies numbered. This is like a set of dies. This is a set of dies. So this is one, two, three, four. It's the number five die from the middle. This is the one that I'm using. I'm also using the Garden Birdhouses stamp set only because I really like this branch. Now, I'm sure you guys have other branches in your arsenal that you could totally use. So there's that. I'm using the Rays of Light stamp set because let's be honest, it's an amazing stamp set and everyone should have it. Um, I'm using the little thank you out of the go to greetings. This is a great set if you guys don't have this. And this is a million dollar set from my friend Sandy Hartka. I couldn't remember how her last name was pronounced. And it's just a really nice sentiment set. It's got different fonts. So sometimes you need that kind of really fancy because your card is just gorgeous and beautiful and it just needs a fancy font. Sometimes you just need a tiny little font, the really kind of fun scripty handwriting, or you need something in between. Um, it's just, it's a really good set. I'm also bringing in the Radiating Stitches dies because why not? They're new. They're in the online store. They're part of the online exclusive collection. Um, as far as I know, they're still available. So I did use the uh, large one here um, on my card. And then I'm also going to use our new ribbon that's also in the online store, in the online exclusives. And it's the Gold and Silver Trim Combo Pack. And it's just a nice... It's not twine. It's a little thicker than twine. So it's actual ribbon. So I just feel like this is a great addition to our line because silver and gold, you really can't go wrong with that. So let us begin. I need a piece of white. Seems to be something I always forget to stick in my kit. Okay. So we're using the Rays of Light stamp set and we're going to use a color that I would not be sad if it retired. I'm just going to say it. I don't use it that often. Not that I don't really, I guess I don't really like it. I like Daffodil Delight better than So Saffron. So if they retire it, I won't be sad. If they keep it, it is what it is. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm just going to leave it in the case. You can put it on a block if you so desire. I just don't think it's necessary to do that. I am trying to make sure that I don't have any lines from my pad that are super noticeable. 
Then I'm just going to take my layer of white. I'm going to stick it on there. I'm going to cover it with another piece of paper just so I can press the ink onto the paper all the way around the whole thing. I'm going to release that and then we're going to pick this up. Whoops, I flew it all the way across the room and here's what we have. Now I don't need the whole thing done because I am going to use my stitched rectangle to cut it. So I placed my stitched rectangle on the layer about like so because I wanted my sun to be kind of in the left upper corner somewhat so I did that and then here it is cut out okay so we've got that done then as I mentioned I did use the radiating stitches die on my layer of soft suede so I just used like a quarter sheet and ran it through um, and so it cuts it so it's just about the perfect layering size for any card okay I'm, and I'm going to put my rectangle in the middle. I don't know. Maybe that's too much, you know, with this radiating stitches and the rays of light. I don't know. I kind of like it. So we're going for it. Um, I do need a scrap paper because, as I mentioned, I am using this branchy thing out of the Garden Birdhouses stamp set. So I've got that here. And I'm going to ink that up with some soft suede because I feel like soft suede and so saffron go together really well. So soft suede is one of my favorite browns that we have. So if soft suede does happen to retire, I am going to shed a tear because I do really like it. Okay, so we are going to add our branchy thing about like this. Kind of coming up from the bottom. I probably should have used a foam pad. Oops. Oh, it's it's decent. We're going to, it's fine. And then I did get this little thank you stamp out of uh, the, what is it called? The go-to greetings stamp set. This little kind of fun thank you right there is what I pulled out. And I'm going to stamp that right down here. Well, let's hope it's straight. You know what? I'm going to do a tester because I'm not positive that it's. Oh, that is pretty straight. Okay. So we're going to stamp that right here. There we go. So that's what we've got so far, those pieces. And then I did tie a little piece of that gold ribbon um, around my pixie spray. So I tied it around my pixie spray and then I cut it. And now I'm going to wrap it around my radiating stitches layer. So I'm going to put the knot right where the stitches stop. And I'm going to get a piece of tape because as you guys know, I am a big fan of scotch tape for holding ribbons. It just works really well for me. And then I'm going to pull this down. And this. There we go. So then we're going to add that to our uh, main layer here. And I think I'm going to do that with some dimensionals. I mean, why not, right? So here is a piece that I am working on getting rid of here. So let's just cut around the edges here. There we go. And we shall see. Oh, come off there. We'll add some here. Oh, sorry, Cynthia. I I had to get my eye dilated because I have, um, it's not a cataract, but it's something that happens to the little sack that your lens sits in, the capsule, I think they call it. So I had a replacement lens put in when I had cataract surgery in uh, two, when was it? 2017. Um, and now my capsule is getting a little bit cloudy. So they just go in with the laser and zap it. So I went in just for the preliminary appointment today. And the doctor, um, you know, checked it out, said, yes, that's what's happening, which is what I suspected. And I've got an appointment in two weeks to go back. They only do it on Thursday afternoons. So I'm going to have this weirdo eye again um, in a couple weeks. I'm going to come in to the live with another dilated eye, I'm sure. So that'll be fun. Okay, so we have that. 
Now we can take this piece and put it on here. And I'm going to do that with some liquid glue. Uh, and Tana is in North Dakota today. How exciting. How's the weather there? Oh, no, South Dakota. Sorry. How is the weather there, Tana? We are supposed to get a bunch of snow this weekend. I hope they're wrong because I just like went out today to go to the doctor. And the snow like around the driveway and around the like little walkways and sidewalks around my house is still like two feet deep. So um, we're going to have snow for a while. Okay. So now I also, oh my gosh, you guys, I seriously used way too many products on this. Um, I have a layer for the inside. What did I do with it? Is it on the floor? Yes. Hold on. Ugh, good Lord. So I have this layer for the inside. The sparkly ribbon Wendy is called, it's just called gold and silver eighth inch trim. Uh, the item code is 161633. It's only in the online store. It's not in the catalog. So I have this other, this is another set of dies that is a online exclusive set. It's called Elegant Borders and it's really fun. So I just did this just because I thought it might look kind of fun inside there. You know, jazz it up just a little bit. Why not, right? It doesn't cost anything extra to add this cool design. Now I can't see what's the good side. Oh, this is the bad side. Uh, this cool design to the inside. So whoever gets the card will get a little treat on the inside as well when they open it. So we are going to add this in here. Ooh, this, this, oh. This is where the eyeball needs to be. I can't really see that good, so I hope that's straight. Okay, then the last thing I decided to do was I have been working with the Petal Park bundle because that's our online class for the month, and we've incorporated the sentiments out of the Sentimental Park bundle. But the Sentimental Park bundle also has some really cool dyes, and one of the dyes is these fun little flowers. So it's like a little flower trio. You get a big one and two small ones when you die cut it. And it puts these um, details in. I'm going to try to get it closer to the camera. Hopefully you can see if it's going to focus. You can see that the die puts a little bit of detail, a little bit of embossing into each flower, which is kind of fun. So I just kind of thought that this might need a little pop of color. So I kind of thought maybe adding some of these little tiny blue flowers might be kind of fun. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a few here. Uh, let's see, maybe like that. Ooh, no, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to go closer to the inside in there. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Anyway, I just thought that might be kind of fun just to add a little pop of color and you could do whatever. I feel like, you know, Poppy Parade might be a nice color to add on here also. Uh, but I just really thought that the yellow and the blue uh, would go together well. So that's what I decided to do. So I'm just going to keep adding these and then I think I'm going to use some pearls in the middle of these flowers. So I hope you guys enjoy this card. I just thought it was kind of fun. Something different. Um, where are my pearls? Hmm. I, oh, hold on. No, yeah. Where are my pearls? Every time I go live, I lose something. Are they in a different bucket? Uh, maybe. Hmm. Well, they were here at some point. So now I feel like I'm going to have to find something else. What can I, I didn't really want to use rhinestones. I feel like rhinestones are like a little bit too much for this card. Where are the pearls? <sighs> Boy, I tell you guys, I feel like some days if my head wasn't attached to my body, I would lose it. Um, and that's really sad. Oh, you know what we might be able to use? Hold on. We might be able to use these, these iridescent ones. I don't know. The, I didn't really want it to be super, like, flashy and shiny. That's why I wanted to use regular pearls. But I don't have any idea what I did with them. I literally was looking at them this morning when I was making this. Okay. We're going for some iridescent pearls here since Barb has lost her pearls. 
Um, like I did say, I guess it's better than losing my mind, right? Okay. Use the old take your pick tool here. Boy, the struggle bus is real right now, you guys, with one eye that works and one eye that is not. <laughs> so great. Ah! Okay. Okay, so there it is. How fun is that? Open it up. You have some fun on the inside. We could certainly do some stamping or you could just write a nice little note. So there it is. Card number one of the evening. Uh, so let me get some of these things out of the way and we will bring in the supplies for the next card. Okay. So you guys would laugh. I always have such a mess off of the camera view because I don't want you guys to have to see this giant mess over here. Okay. So now I just threw something on the floor. Is my lid to my take your pick tool? I don't know. I've shared this tip before you guys, but I'm going to share it again. I have used one of my Stampin' Blends to color the ends of my cap because I drop these on the floor frequently enough and as you know, I have eye problems. I don't see that great. And this really, really helps me find that caps when I drop them on the floor, which unfortunately happens frequently around here. Okay. Uh, so our next card, we're going to be using the Summer Shadows uh, stamp set and die set. Um, this is one of those sets that was kind of crazy. It was a stamp, It was a celebration die set here about a year and a half ago, I think. And they actually carried it over, which I thought was amazing. So um, it goes with the Shaded Summer stamp set. So that's really fun. Oh, we have somebody from, are you must be from the UK, Heather. Her first time catching me live. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. That's awesome. Um, so I'm using the Summer Shadows die set die set stamp set and then I'm also going to use this zigzag out of the basic borders because this is also a set that everybody should have because it's amazing okay so let's bring in our card or card colors we're using Bermuda Bay one of my faves white can't go wrong with white um, I'm using a piece of Bermuda Bay designer series paper this is from the brights collection the last time I looked, the Brights collection was on low inventory. So if these collections of DSP are something you guys like, I would uh, get it right away. Um, this is actually the pack of paper that we're using in our Petal Park class for the month. So um, if you don't have it, you should uh, you should get it. Just a little little secret there for you. Okay, so I have this piece. I have cut this to two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay. Um, I'm also going to be using the brass or brushed brass butterflies. Um, oh my gosh, I have so many first timers on here tonight, you guys. This is awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate that very much. Okay. So we are going to start with the large stamp out of the Shaded Summer set. That's this one right here. And I like to ink up these stamps with our stamp and write markers. So I've got the crushed, or no, this is mango, mango melody, Pacific point and Bermuda Bay. So we are going to basically Bermuda Bay is going to be our green. So I'm going to do my leaves in Bermuda Bay. Um, and a couple of the leaves are going to be in mango and a couple of the leaf or excuse me, flowers are going to be in mango and a couple of the flowers are going to be in Pacific point. So uh, we're going to start when I do marker with my Stampin' Write markers, I use the edge, not the tip. I just feel like um, this preserves my tip if I have to actually color into a tight space. Um, I want my tip to be nice and pointy. So I'm just using the edge of the brush here and I'm just going to color these flowers. So I've got the largest one here in the middle that I'm doing mango. And then I'm also going to use the uh, Pacific Point for another flower here. And so I just kind of hold the stamp in my hand and then just sort of rub the edge of the marker around everything. And of course, I'm going to butcher this because I honestly can't see that well. <laughs> Thankfully, I already did this and die cut it earlier when I could see. So 
that's good. Oh, I'm not even in the frame. So I'm going to do this larger flower in the Pacific Point. So we'll get that. There we go. And then I'm going to do this one up here also, this flower. Oh, I can see I got some mango on that one. We're, let's cover that up with our Pacific Point. No problem. Okay. Hopefully this isn't as bad as I think it might be. But, oh, I just went off right there. Yeah, this, the struggle is real. <laughs> I feel like my eye has to be getting better. No, these are just our regular stamp and write markers. So they're just a marker. If you were to use a stamp and blend, you would not, you would stain your stamp. So that would be like using a Sharpie. Oh my gosh, I think I see a tip come through. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know who you are. It says cards and stamps cards and stamp i don't i don't know i just barely saw it come through thank you so much for that tip i appreciate that so much that is so sweet you guys are awesome when you do that okay there we go we're gonna turn our stamp we're gonna come over here and get this little trio of leaves try to get that little spot of pacific point oh and i just got bermuda bay on the edge of my mango flower Hmm. Yeah, I should have known when they said you could come in Thursday for your appointment that it would be bad because I can't, I can't be having blurry eyes when I'm trying to stamp. I'm trying to be a professional here. Okay, so I am going to now huff on this, which means moisten it with my breath and stamp it. Oh my gosh. And I have another tip from Patty. Oh, Patty, thank you. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. And that's what we get with our Stampin' Right markers. Isn't that amazing? And you can see I did get a tiny bit of Bermuda Bay on that mango flower, but ugh, it is what it is. Okay, so then there is a coordinating die in the die set, uh, this big one right here. And so I did cut that out. So there we go. And you see I missed down here, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to, I'm not going to use the whole thing. So, okay. So back to our card here. We have our Bermuda Bay card base, and oh gosh, I can't even see to fold this. Hopefully I folded it properly. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so what I would do is I'm going to add my designer series paper to the front like this. I did do a little zigzag, like I mentioned, out of the basic borders dies. So here's my little zigzag that I'm going to put right here. And then I have two sizes of white strips. One of them is seven eighths. This other one is 13 sixteenths. I know that's a stupid measurement. Why would I use it? Well, because the set, the sentiment that I used is out of the stamp set. It's a happy birthday. And it's like in between these two sizes. And so I'm going to try to stamp it on either one of these and we'll see which one it looks the best on. And then we'll go with that. So um, I'm using Pacific Point and the happy birthday sentiment. And I'm going to stamp it kind of over to the left. So let me sort of use my eyeballs here as a guide. Oh, that's a little too far to the left, I think. Uh, like that. That turned out pretty good. I am really, really impressed with myself on that, honestly. And then this one, I need to bring it down just a little bit more. This paper is a little larger, a little wider. But I kind of like the skinnier one. So I realize it's only a sixteenth of an inch, but I am going to do this. Uh, so I'm going to take the smaller one. There we go. Okay. So let's, before we do that, I do want to do a little stamping up here, kind of at the top. So there is this cute little leafy thing in the stamp set also. It's this little kind of sprig right here. And I'm going to do that in some Bermuda Bay. So I'm going to open up the card. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave it closed. I changed my mind. Get my Bermuda Bay ink out here. And so I'm going to kind of start. So I'm doing it like from here up. So I like to start in the middle when I'm doing any sort of random stamping like this. If you start in the middle and work your way out, you'll never end up in a situation where you don't have, like sometimes you might, if you came in, the spot that you're left with in the middle might be too much for one stamp, but it might be too small for two stamps. And then you're 
placement and everything is going to look a little wonky, a little weird. So I like to start in the middle and work my way out. That way I end up with a lot of, um, I guess, not that I'm perfect, but the spacing, it's just, it's a lot better. If you can control the spacing and you're in charge of it, it will look a lot better. And that's what I feel like happens when you start in the middle and then work your way out. And then you can just control everything. And so you can see how it's working out really well here. And let's see, I'm going to actually do that. And probably one right here and maybe one right here, just to make sure that I have enough coverage when I stick my piece of paper on. And that looks great. Okay, so I am going to add my paper with some liquid glue. This way I can wiggle it around just a little bit to make sure that it hits the fold line. Um, it's probably gonna be a slight bit too long, but um, that's fine. We can cut that off. So I want it to be at the very bottom and at the fold line. So with my liquid glue here, I can wiggle it around and I can see, well, most people would be able to see. <laughs> Not me though. Okay, there we go. Get that all glued down. Then we've got our little, this piece here. And I can see that I did not cut that straight like at all. So uh, we're gonna wing it. Uh, so as you can see, there's very little from this bump to the top, but over here, there's a lot. So we are going to kind of do, Ooh, you know what I can do? I can bring in one of these. Oh, Judy wants to know if I've been to the eye doctor. Judy. Yes. We talked about that earlier. You might not have been here. I just came from the eye doctor. Um, I do have uh, some cloudiness in the capsule that I had a cataract replacement in. And so I am going to be getting that taken care of in two weeks. So I will be uh, blind again in two weeks. All right. So this is what I'm going to do, you guys. I'm using my grid paper and I'm going to have the bottom of the zigzags are going to touch a line. So as you can sort of see over here, I'm going to end up touching this dark line and then over here, the same dark line. So that's what that's my plan. So I'm going to run some glue along the edge here of the designer series paper. So basically what I'm trying to do is like cover up what I call the seam, that space where the designer series paper ends and then the rest of your card starts. I like to have a seam cover. It's just uh, one of those weird things I like. Okay, so I've got my card lined up. I'm gonna do that again with the point. Oops, we're gonna bring it back just a tiny bit. And I hope this is going to work. I mean, it should. It seems like it's not, but it should. That Why would that not work? I mean, seriously. But that does not look like it's working at all. Does that look crooked or is it just me? I think it's me. It has to be straight. There's no other explanation. Okay. So now we're going to cut off some of this excess and then maybe that will help us. Help me see better. See what I've done. Because then I'm going to cover up this little piece that I just put on with my sentiment piece. Okay. So we have that on there. How How is that crooked? It is. But how is that possible? How is that possible? Why? Why is that? That does not make any sense to me at all why that would be crooked. But yet here we are and it is. Is it my eyes? Yeah, it was, it was wider on one end. That's why I used my thing. All right, hold on. Where is my sentiment piece? So if I was to stick my sentiment piece on here, line up the card, and if I was to do that, that, that just does not, that has to be straight. It has to be an optical illusion. <laughs> no, I know one end is wider, but it shouldn't matter because I lined up the bottom of these zag zigzags. Anyway. Okay, this is what I wanted to do was to do that. And I feel like it's going to be okay. I feel like we're going to be fine. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to bring in my piece here. And we need to like figure out where we want to cut it off at. So I want it to be something like that. Okay, so I am definitely going to cut off the point here. I know they're not, but it sh this should work. I, I hope this, this should work. I hope. 
gosh, you guys, making a card is hard work. <laughs> okay. So that's how it's going to end up. So I need to stick this on like this. Okay. And then this I'm going to stick on. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my glue on the card. All right. And we're going to line up the card again. And then we are going to put this on right at that spot. Hopefully this fixes it because that's, that's bugging me like a lot bugging me. Okay. I feel like, I feel like that's straight now. Is it? Is it my eyes? Ugh, gosh. Okay. Well, hopefully when we get everything on here and it's all done, it won't look stupid. Okay. Next step <laughs> is to take this pool party. What is this called? Pool party grow grain ribbon. And I'm going to color the inside of this ribbon. It's kind of got this border, this little border on the edges. And I did see in the catalog that Stampin' Up! Uh, did kind of do this. And I think it's really cool. If you just cut, do, do the inside here and leave the little border pieces. So if you just go ahead and color the length that you need and then tie a bow, look how fun that is, right? And I'm just going to stick the bow right here. So I feel like the more stuff we stick on here, uh, the less it will look like I have it all wonky, I hope. I hope. <laughs> okay. Stick our glue dot on the back of our ribbon. Stick the ribbon kind of right here. Ugh. Okay. I feel like it's all good now. I feel like I've sort of fixed it, but I feel like this edge, this little uh, end of the ribbon is a little bit too long. Let's see if I can snip it off. There. Better. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to do with this is I do have an inside piece and I use that same die. Where's my inside piece? I use that same die from the previous card to stick on the inside. So we're going to do that again. I just kind of feel like this, this just jazzes up the inside of your card and it's just so simple to do. Any kind of a border die that you had, I feel, would jazz up the inside of the card. So... Uh, the Ribbon Mary is called the Pool Party Grow Green. It's in the mini catalog that we have going on right now. And it's just kind of fun. If you One of the samples in the catalog shows it uh, where they colored in the inside of it. And I just thought that was kind of cool. It just really makes the sides of the ribbon pop. Okay. Um, I need to find something that I was going to use. It was those butterflies. Where are they? Um, does anybody see? Oh, here they are. Here they are. Here they are. These brass butterflies. So I just kind of thought maybe some brass butterflies on the card might be kind of cool. So we'll try a few. We've got a small one here. Maybe we'll do a small and a big up there. Whoa. That is glue side up. And then perhaps a small one over here. How's that? A little bit of bling, as they say. So there it is. There is our card. It wouldn't be hard if you could see, I think. I feel like, and I feel like that because I cut that kind of wonky, that really messed with my eyeballs. Really messed with the eyeballs. So, okay. Note to sell. Don't try to do that when you can't see. All right, let me clean this up a little bit. I've got one more project for you guys. Hopefully you like it. Um, I'm just going to push these stamps out of the frame. You guys can't see them. They're away from me, so hopefully I won't touch them. And then we won't make a mess, which is always a good thing. Okay. And there goes the lid to my take your pick tool. All right. Last card coming in. This one is going to use the Sentimental Park Bundle. We're using a few sentiments, and then I'm using um, some tiny, these tiny little flower trios at the bottom. So the tiny little flower trios at the bottom I used on my first card. 
So these little blue flowers here are these little flowers. And so for this card, I've got some Petal Pink and some Knight of Navy uh, ones. So we're also going to be using the, what's this called? Regency Park Designer Series paper. I chose this pattern right here. Uh, there is a lot of fun patterns in here. You could do this card that I'm doing. You could do with any of these, I feel like. Any of these fun, bright, very colorful patterns. I think it would work great. So, but I'm using this one here. So, oh, look what I just found. My pearls in the wrong bucket. Or are they? Maybe I was going to use them twice. Who knows, honestly, anymore? Who knows what Barb was planning on doing? Barb doesn't even know. Okay, here are some pieces and parts. We've got a balmy blue card base. I have a layer of balmy blue that I can't remember the size of. Uh, what is this? Three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So I have done a little embossing on this layer with the cane weave folder. It's in the same collection. I think it's called the Regency Park Suite. And so it has the Sentimental Park Bundle, the Petal Park Bundle, the folder, the Designer Series paper, um, the Navy... Knight of Navy bordered ribbon, which is what I have here with my bow. And then there's the milky dots that are gone. They're sold out. Uh, so we'll use something uh, different. We're going to use pearls because that's where the pearls are. Okay. So that, that. Oh, and then I also have a white layer that is four by five and a quarter. So these two are going to go together just to have a little bit of a break between the two blues. And because I did emboss this, I am going to use liquid glue to stick it down because I just feel like liquid glue is really, really good on embossed pieces of cardstock. So we will get this on here. Oh, and I need to kind of be precise. Hopefully it's going to work out. There we go. get that pressed on. I'm trying not to press too hard because I don't want to get rid of all my cane weave embossing, but I do want to make sure that it's stuck. Oh, here. Hello, Marjean. How are the roads down there, Marjean? I heard there was a lot of closures going on, so that's no good. Um, so here's my designer series paper. This is a one inch piece. Um, it's going to end up being as wide as my blue, which so it should be four. Um, and then I also have, since this is one inch, this is one and one eighth. So I'm going to glue these two together first. So I think I'll glue this, put the glue on this, and then I can uh, snip off the excess easier. Okay, so I feel like we'll do this. And we want uh, like a sixteenth of an inch at the top and a sixteenth of an inch at the bottom um, of this. Again, I just wanted a little bit of color to make this pop. I felt like just the paper on that, it looks nice. But when you add a little bit of color behind there, it does really pop off the paper. So, all right. So now we are going to add it across this layer here. So just pick a spot. We'll add some glue. There we go. And then we can just stick this down. Maybe I'll have better luck lining this up than I did that other stuff. Jeez. My cane weaves are pretty straight, so that should work out pretty good. Okay, so we got that down. Now we're going to snip off that excess. I always say it's better to have your paper too long than too short because you can pretty much always cut it off. Okay, so we have that. Uh, then we have our, well, we'll bring this piece back in. This is our scrap, and I'm going to do a little stamping on this piece. So I'm going to do uh, some balmy blue and some petal pink. Oh, I know, Marjean. I was thinking about you guys again today when I saw that the interstate was closed. I'm like, geez, can those poor people down there get a break? It's I-80 that we're talking about, and it runs the entire length of the state of Wyoming. Uh, so it comes up, you come up from Utah, you get into Wyoming on I-80, and you literally run the entire length of the whole state and go into Nebraska. And they have had so much snow and so much wind uh, wreaking havoc over the roads that they have been closed more than they've been open. It's just been horrible. All right, so I've got, I did a little masking because I want to say thank you. So I've got the thanks, plural, 
and the word you, but I want this to just say thank. So I put a little piece of scotch tape over the S and I'm going to ink this up. Most important thing about masking is to remove your tape. I'm just going to throw that out there. All right. And so we're going to stamp. Thanks. I guess we'll stamp it kind of in the middle here. So we have thank. And then we have you. And I'm going to do that in the petal pink. And so I'm going to do a little bit offset. So it's going to be underneath the thank, but just off to the right ever so slightly. So there we go. Thank you. And then there is a couple of really cool dies in this set. They're kind of like labels. So we've got this kind of smaller one here. This is the one that I'm going to use. Uh, but then we also have this plain shape that does have some stitching on it. And then there's this big one here that I haven't used yet. But I do have a swap. I'm going to go find that really quick because this die is actually pretty cool. And you might not realize it does this um, without seeing this card. Well, here's one that's a good maybe example. And I think I have another one. Hold on. Well, I guess not. This must be the one. Okay, so here's a swap card that I got from somebody. And you can see how these kind of... It kind of cuts, but not all the way off. So you could stick something under that. Like you could put another label under there or something and then have those flowers kind of hang over. So that's kind of a cool little uh, detail of this larger piece here. But for the card that I'm making today, we are going to use... I need to get rid of this tape or I'm going to get ink somewhere. Hold on. Into the trash you go. So I'm going to use this. And I did this earlier, so it barely barely fits and then when you run it through your machine this is what you end up getting so we have thank you on there so i'm going to move those out of the way move that out of the way and i'm going to put my thank you right over my designer series paper so it's about the same height so i'm just going to stick that on there i'm going to go ahead and use some dimensionals uh if i can find the dimensionals hopefully they are they're almost gone, you guys. It's such a satisfying feeling when you can toss away a set of dimensionals. You can see I've done this more than once, so I have. And you know what? I need to poke those out because I don't want those. I want those to be out. I think I need one more piece of dimensional. I feel like I need it in the middle, otherwise it might sag. And Sagging is just not uh, what we're a fan of. Whoops. Somehow I got that. Uh, with its backing still on there a little bit. Okay. Get those off. Is anybody doing anything fancy for dinner? I would love to be doing something fancy for dinner, but we're going to have leftovers. And my people are not going to be very happy. But you know what? I don't care. Because I hate making dinner. So there you go. Okay. So then I did tie a bow with the navy ribbon. And I'm just going to stick it right there. Kind of above my label. Ooh, I need to try shepherd's pie. I've asked this question before, and you, I've had other people say shepherd's pie, and I keep I keep meaning to try that. So I'm going to try that one of these days. Okay, so there's my bow. Then, as I mentioned, I have these little flowers that I die cut. Here are the two dies. They're exactly the same, but you can get six, which is really nice. You can cut six flowers at a time. So I have six of each color. And I think I'm going to go with a petal pink one. And what's really cool is, look, this flower fits right over that flower on the white. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to add a bit of glue. Oops, get my glue booger off there. And just kind of dot gently. I'm trying not to squeeze too hard because I don't want, like, a big old pile. Ugh, like I just did. A big old pile of glue to come out. Okay, and then I'm just going to stick that right over. Check that out. Yay. And then up here, um, this open flower can be covered up with uh, another one of these larger ones. So we're going to do that with this navy here. Uh, like so. There we go. And then we're going to add another pink one right there at the edge. And then we're going to get out some pearls. Because that's what I want to do. 
Ooh, Patty says it's her 70th birthday and a friend is taking her to dinner. Well, happy birthday, Patty. Oh my gosh, it's Patty's birthday and Patty gave me a gift. Patty, you are much too sweet. All right, I'm trying to get that on there. There we go. Cute, huh? Okay, now we're going to bring in the pearls. Push some stuff out of the way so we can sort of see what we're doing here. Well, here's a bunch that I colored uh, Starry Sky, and then I didn't like how they looked, so I didn't use them. All right. Add some pearls. Yay. Well, that one's just a little bit off. Okay. And that, and now we need to add this to the front of the card. That is awesome. Happy birthday to you, Patty. I hope you have a great evening. I hope you have some wonderful food, some great conversation with a wonderful friend. Does it get any better than that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I do have an inside layer somewhere. Here it is. And you know what? There's a lot more sentiments in here. So we've got thank you on the front. And you know what we're going to do? I think we're going to say dear friend for the inside. So let me get a block here. Whoops. Okay. And, oh, you know what we can do? We can add some more flowers. We have some a few of these extra little flowers here. Oop, you know what? Mm, let's try it. I think maybe I might put it at the bottom, but we're going to try it up here first. We'll see what happens. Okay. And then let's just add a, little, a few dots of glue. Come out of here. Oh. There it is. It's squirting out too fast. Ah, there's one. There's two. And there's three. Okay. Bring my take your pick tool in here. And we will add that. And a navy. Whoops. And how about another navy? There we go cute and then I'm going to get my glue here and we'll put this on the inside okay I'm going to flip my card around because that's how I roll and we're going to line this up I think my eye might be back to normal you guys I can see you know I can see better I can't see perfect but I can definitely see better so yay okay there it is in all of its glory. Let me bring in, ooh, I just stuck my finger in that petal pink. Let me wipe it on my pants because <laughs> I have sweatpants on so I can wipe ink on them and it doesn't make any difference. Here are the rest of the cards here. Now remember, I do have a class with the Petal Park bundle. So it's amazing. It's ready to go. All the links to everything that I talk about are in the description of the video. So just keep that in mind. And then remember, that I do have my special uh, grab bag going on. If you order uh, $75 or more from me, I will send you a grab bag in April. And here's our project. So I hope you guys enjoyed the cards tonight. I know I did. Sorry for the freak show that I showed you at the beginning with my crazy eye. Um, hopefully it won't, it won't be like that next week, but it'll probably be like that the week after that. So you get to see it again. Lucky you. <laughs> All right, guys, I had a fantastic time stepping with you tonight. I hope you guys had a great time. Have a fantastic week. Stay warm and dry if you're in crazy weather. And I will see you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye.